Welcome to the 3ESI Intersight webinar series. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Brittany Bluestein, Marketing Coordinator at 3ESI Intersight. Today's webinar is Embracing Excel Economics for Enterprise Planning, presented by Wayne Kinnett, Product Manager of Business Planning at 3ESI Intersight. Thanks very much, Brittany, and thanks to everyone again for joining us for today's presentation. Now, the first mention of Excel in any commercial vendor's presentation may have a lot of people thinking, oh boy, here we go, once again, they're going to tell us all the horror stories of using Excel and why we should switch to their product. But this is not that presentation, my friends. It is going to be much more than that. As Brittany mentioned, my name is Wayne Kennick, and I am the Product Manager for Business Planning Solutions here at 3ESI Intersight. In my 15 years in upstream oil and gas software, I've been focused mainly in the space of economics, production forecasting, reserves, and planning. And I've had the opportunity to work with and represent software applications that are leaders in their respective niche. I've also been fortunate to work with many great clients in the upstream space. And in this upstream space, there's no shortage of software applications aimed at making your workflow smoother and easier. And yet, despite numerous attempts of varying success, the commercial applications have yet to completely replace a well-known incumbent, that is Microsoft Excel. So rather than try to do that yet again, today's presentation will focus on a more friendly arrangement with Excel. Through the agenda today, we're going to be covering a few different topics. Excel and other spreadsheets, essentially the build-it-yourself approach, were the first systems adopted by companies to solve those problems. So we'll take a quick look or a quick overview on those systems. But then enterprise systems began to appear. We'll discuss what were the drivers for bringing these systems in. With that, we'll be looking at both the pros and the cons of the spreadsheets and the enterprise systems. Now, given that industry, in some respects, gravitates back to Excel, could we potentially have both? And why would we want both of these systems? What does this really give the end user? Finally, we'll be looking at a real example approach to solving this problem. The goal here is to embrace, not replace. So in the beginning, it makes sense that many economic and financial models would have been built by those end users and they would have used the tools they had at the time. Spreadsheets, Excel, Lotus 1, 2, 3, simple database applications like Access and other proprietary systems would have made up the solution in a lot of these cases. But the nature of these systems was that the creator, the economists, created and owned the models. They alone had the ability to vet and modify them. One consequence was that other corporate groups would be reliant on these creators to run the models and hence would have to submit data to them. The accuracy of the models relied on the creators themselves. They were building the models for their own internal use, not necessarily selling them, and therefore the systems were often internally validated only. So these do-it-yourself systems had both good and not so good aspects. From a positive side, the calculations were designed specifically for the task at hand. They were open, to reading the details, so they were transparent, people could see what was in the calculations. Most people are able to understand these calculations because of this transparency. People speak Excelese, if you will. And the flexibility allowed, or the adaptability allowed, to building different models. So there was a lot of positives to these situations. The users themselves could create the formulas and models and ultimately model contracts and agreements and things of that nature. But on the downside, this approach can come at a cost. Very often, it was the creator, and hence the owner of the model, who was then tasked with running it. Spreadsheets, the data, and the calculations are intermixed, which is a recipe for a disaster. This open nature also meant that anyone could change it. So on the plus side, you had the ability to change it, but that also presents a problem from a security and integrity point of view. And as we said before, the knowledge of this system lies with the creator. So again, people may often have to line up to have data processed, and there is always a risk if something happened to that creator along the way. So in hindsight, the spreadsheets were a natural starting point. But as we saw, there were challenges that needed to be addressed. Industry recognizes this, and they responded in kind. 
Therein lies the introduction of the enterprise system. With enterprise systems, these first evolved from internal efforts to address those issues. Within organizations, individuals started writing software, perhaps access-based, that was more fit for purpose. The applications focused in various disciplines, those being petroleum economics, production forecasting, reserves management, capital management, and many others. I'm sure a lot of you can think of specific examples of these first generation applications that evolved out of the previous chaos that existed. One major defining characteristic of the enterprise system was that the data and the calculation logic were housed separately. In this approach, the user no longer needs to build their own model, but these two concepts are separated, which is a more robust approach to a solution. But this enterprise system is not without its ups or downs either. On the plus side, the project data now had more structure to it rather than simply mixed in with the calculations. There was security on the data and the calculations. People couldn't inadvertently change calculations or reconfigure, whether by accident or on purpose. And with commercial applications, the average user benefits from a much larger user base. The application is now looked at by other users across different companies and vetted in that fashion. Overall, the user is left with a more secure system that everyone has access to, but at the same time, it is being vetted by industry. But as we can imagine, this approach isn't perfect either. In order to provide this speed and efficiency, the calculations are often hidden from the user. People often refer to these types of systems as a black box system. They don't know what's actually going in to the calculations or how it's being manipulated, how the data is coming out. The nature of the commercial application is such that users cannot modify the calculations. Tying in that is that if changes did need to be made, there's often a time lag associated. If we think about a fiscal model as an example, the problem becomes that these models can change fast and unexpectedly, or even during a negotiation, while the software release cycle is much more methodical and follows a often longer time horizon or a longer time cycle. Adding to that downside, these enterprise systems begin to be stressed with other factors. Pressure starts to build on these enterprise systems. This comes from both external and internal pressure. As the industry, our industry expands to different geographic regions, new fiscal agreements are constantly added and negotiated. Existing in already complex regimes, like what we have in certain parts of the world, the Can Canada and the US, are often subject to change. And the cyclic nature of our economic environment is nothing new to anyone that's worked in this industry. Users are responsible for calculation accuracy and have to run more and more scenarios. But when things are tight, then all the calculations, budgets, and the spending, everything starts to come under the microscope and become subject to audit and scrutiny. And so what we see happening in this situation is that the good slowly starts to be more and more outweighed by the bad. So the result is somewhat of a mixed environment. Different groups start to opt for the route that best serves them. In some cases, the choice might be made for them, but with this increased financial pressure, the finance groups opt for models that they control and own. In a similar fashion, the economists may want visibility and control in their economic models. So you'll see groups migrating back to this spreadsheet type model. Operations who are always dealing with extremely large data sets occasionally have to exchange data with operating partners and may not want to build models, but rather spend time on analysis. In this mixed environment, errors are bound to happen when transferring data to or from Excel and especially to or from in-house built applications. And so the chaos that goes with that freeform approach starts to creep back in, the chaos that comes with uh, an uncontrolled system with the Excel-based approach. So we have to ask ourselves a bigger question. What if we could have both of these approaches? The idea is simple in concept, at least. We want to keep the good and we want to mitigate the bad. So with Excel, the power comes from the flexibility and the agility to model different economic situations and modify those when needed. But we don't need things like manual data transfers, moving data manually between applications, even for rollups or consolidations. And we don't want to rely on the company owners or experts. 
This can present delays or even introduce further risk. With respect to the enterprise system, again, we want to keep what is good. Centralized data in one place that is separate from the calculation model is a good thing to have. But we want to eliminate one of the biggest downsides, the black box type calculations. The problem here is not understanding what happens to the inputs in order to generate the output of that system. So when we combine the positive aspects for both, we start to get a system that gives us centralized data that is secure and separate from the calculation logic. The users have the power and the ability to modify models when needed, but without sacrificing the security. Because these users can modify the models, the calculations are now readable and auditable by everyone. And finally, both the data and the calculation models are secure. Now this all sounds great from a higher level, but before we rush off and mash these two concepts together, we need to consider some important points. Up to this point, we've spoken about the flexibility of the Excel models. And because of that, we need to recognize the types of models that will be created. The enterprise system will provide things like the operations data, economic inputs, and other info into the spreadsheet model. The model itself may be something simple, and I use simple generously, but it may be something simple like a tax royalty structure that is somewhat linear in nature. Although in Western Canada or in the US, these, these models are anything but simple. But the spreadsheet may also be used to model more complex regimes like production sharing contracts involving parallel type calculations. In either case, the enterprise system needs to consume the outputs regardless of the structure, and the model itself will require security around it. There's other important considerations or where and how the Excel models will be used according to your corporate hierarchy. The fact is that there's value and a need at all levels, assets all the way up through corporate. At a jurisdiction level, such as individual states or provinces, we need calculations. Ad valorem and severance taxes in states is a perfect example. Royalty models, whether they be a tax royalty model or a ring fence or countrywide, need to be applied as appropriate. And at the corporate level, we need to consider a couple important points. First, the challenge of rolling up across different jurisdictions, which do not share the same detailed characteristics. And secondly, the introduction of financial calculations, potentially introducing corporate concepts, things like debt, which did not exist at a lower level. With all of that said, we need to recognize that data needs to aggregate up, while at the same time, results will need to be allocated back down the hierarchy. So we've spent some time talking about the evolution and the impetus behind bringing spreadsheets and enterprise systems together. We discussed what we'd ideally keep, the good stuff, and what risks we want to mitigate, the bad. And we touched on considerations of what to keep in mind when we do bring these together. But let's take a look at how this actually does work. From the front end, we're going to look at an example through a fictitious company, Up Oil & Gas, and see how they manage all of their respective assets. Here, the enterprise system takes care of managing the inputs. Security is on, data is in place, and the average user really doesn't necessarily need to see the plumbing behind the scenes. When results are calculated, the user proceeds in an application as they normally would. They run an analysis and dive into the results. They can look at things like cash flow charts, detailed data tables if necessary, but basically the workflow is the same. Under the hood, however, the fiscal model is laid out in Excel with all of the wonderful things that come along with that. It's Excel, so there's no specialized programming language required by the user to create any of these calculations. They can follow along and audit the calculations if necessary. And obviously, they can create the models as required. What we have illustrated here is where these two worlds meet. So first, the models can be attached at any level of your corporate hierarchy as needed. They may be used to introduce financials, or they may be used for fiscal regime or royalty type calculations. The other component illustrated here is that the Excel models are stored securely within the enterprise application. So they can still be audited and modified by authorized users. From a calculation perspective, we can envision it as illustrated on this slide. The bigger box represents the entire enterprise system. The project input data, master data, and project structure is managed by EasyManage. At calculation time, the inputs are processed according to Excel defined calculations. 
from there, the output is fed back to Easy Manage for use in reporting, charting, and other output format. So with that, when we carefully combine the flexibility and the readability of Excel models with the security and robustness of an enterprise system, we're able to leverage all of the good stuff. The calculations are fit for purpose. They're built the way that you need them. Most everyone speaks XLEs or can understand the calculations, follow along the logic, if you will, within a spreadsheet. Because of that, they're adaptable to fit any fiscal or economic model. They're transparent. The enterprise system gives a structure to the projects over and above just the calculations on its own. The security around the calculations and the data separates those two concepts, but also protects them from inadvertent uh, alterations or mistakes. The calculations can be vetted by experts in an industry peer group. And with this type of approach, it provides the potential to expand the enterprise system or the enterprise solution as your company grows. So with that, I'd like to close the presentation. I'd like to thank all of you for attending today's uh, webinar. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at info at 3esi-entersite.com or visit us on our website. Thanks very much, and we look forward to chatting with you again in future webinars.